didn't you really miss out? What's up everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. Today I'm gonna tell you if you really missed out on the Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. Most of you, if you're watching this video, have probably tried own, uh, put your foot into the Endorphin Pro 2, or at least the one, but here's the Saucony Endorphin Pro 2. This is Saucony's carbon fiber plated racer, the competitor to the Alpha Fly, the Next Percents, the Metaspeed Skies, all that stuff. This shoe is the same kind of thing. From talking to you guys and from just reading the comments on some of my videos, uh, it's apparent to me that this is a lot of people's go-to choice for the marathon or for any kind of race that they wanna do. But then about a month ago, Saucony was like, let's get cute, let's one up ourselves and come out with the Endorphin Pro Plus. This shoe was available in limited quantities and I think it sold out pretty darn quick. And the other interesting thing about this is that it's also $50 more than the regular Pro. So before you guys are like, well, we can't even get that shoe. Why would you review it? Well, hear me out here because you don't know if this shoe's ever gonna come back. It very well may. and. A lot of you have asked me if I think that this shoe was worth the extra 50 bucks. So I ran in this shoe for my 7.1 mile run the other day, last Sunday, and it was the first time I had ever worn it. So I have a little bit of an idea of what this shoe feels like to race in, and if it really is worth it over the regular pros. So let's watch the running footage and then we'll chat it out. started today, I do want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by Saucony. However, they're not going to see this video before you. They're not telling me what to say and all my opinions are always my own. I think my biggest question here was what is Saucony's end game? Why did they do this? Why do they want to make the Endorphin Pro better? After doing a little bit of research about the shoe, it became clear to me that Saucony wanted to make a slightly more aggressive, lighter, and um, just an, a shoe for your all out performance. Not that the Endorphin Pro 2 isn't that, but this is supposed to be that plus in a plus package. So let's talk about weight. Did they succeed in making the Pro Plus lighter? Well, they did, according to my calculations. I put both of these shoes on the scale. They're both 10 and a half women's size shoes. Uh, the Pro Plus came in at 7.1 ounces and the regular Pro 2 came in at 7.7 ounces. You know, I didn't think that this was particularly heavy by any means, um, but if you're looking for something even more lighter, it's gonna just feel like there's no shoe on your foot, then you're in luck because this is 0.6 ounces lighter. Thank goodness. As far as I know, the other specs are the same. I believe this still has an eight millimeter drop. And for me, both of these shoes are true to size. So how did they make this shoe lighter? Well, they completely changed the upper. In the regular Pro, you have an engineered mesh. It's pretty thin, it's breathable, but it does have a little bit of structure in that midfoot to just keep you locked down. And in the back by the heel counter, you do have a little bit of sturdiness. In the Endorphin Pro Plus, they have completely revamped this upper material. Here, the engineered mesh is even more breathable, even more lightweight. It's very soft. And in the midfoot, it is completely stripped of any overlays. In the back by the heel counter, you're losing what little sturdiness you had in the Pro 2, and you're just getting 
a nice thin piece of fabric. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit surprised about my preference when it comes to these two uppers. I would think that the lack of structure and the lack of overlays would be a negative for me, but I actually think I do prefer the Pro Plus's upper over the regular Pro. I really loved the breathability of this shoe while I was out on the course on Sunday. Uh, I could feel that wind passing right through the forefoot and not only in the forefoot, I felt it around the midfoot and pretty much everywhere that this shoe is perforated, which as you can see, if I kind of hold it up close, is everywhere. I also like that in the ankle collar of the Pro Plus, they got rid of this kind of like rougher material that's in the regular Pro and put suede. Again, I've never asked for suede in a running shoe, but I have to say that I am kind of digging it here in the Pro Plus, and I especially like it in the heel area where it hits your Achilles. Uh, they put a little bit of extra padding there to kind of avoid the blister situation, and I think they did a really good job with that. But if you like a gusseted tongue, you're not gonna get that here in the Pro Plus, whereas you would in the Pro, and you're also not gonna get this like little orange lace lock that I don't think anybody cares about. And the tongues are slightly different. The Pro Plus is suede and the regular Pro is kind of like a softer mesh material. Could it be that for longer distances, I would prefer the Pro 2's upper perhaps just because it's a little bit more structured, probably would help me to stay on the platform better when my form really starts to break down. Uh, but however, for what I'm doing right now, I think that the Pro Plus is really great and I know lots of people did wear this in Chicago and probably will wear it in New York when you're watching this actually, the marathon should be happening or about to happen or something like that. But overall, I will say that I was um, caught off guard by how well the shoe held my foot in place despite the um, minimal vibe that it has. But the upper is where the differences between these two shoes stop. Both of these shoes are rocking the same exact midsole of Power Run PB foam mixed with a carbon fiber plate. So if you're familiar with the ride of the Endorphin Pro 2, then you're gonna feel right at home here in the Pro Plus. In fact, if you were blindfolded and someone put these shoes on your foot for you, because the uppers do feel different, so that would be a giveaway, uh, but if someone else put your shoes on and blindfolded you and told you to tell the difference between the two, I would wager that you probably would have no idea because these midsoles feel exactly the same because they are. During my race on Sunday in this shoe, I had no problem getting up on my toes and into my next stride. I mean, my body was kind of feeling heavy, but it was not the shoe at all. And I've seen in a couple of other videos, people saying that this feels a little bit different in the midsole than this does. And I personally don't see that. I think they feel identical, but, that's just me, and um, I just wanted to let you guys know my experience because they're so similar. And if we turn these shoes over to the outsoles, look, they have the exact same outsoles, carbon rubber, yeah. These are the same outsoles, the same outsoles. There's nothing different about this outsole against this one. They both have decent traction. They're both fairly durable. And I haven't fallen on my ass in either of these shoes. So we have different uppers, same midsole, same outsole, different price. The Endorphin Pro Plus is $199.95 on runningwarehouse.com. And I think when Saucony released this shoe for the limited time that it was available, uh, it was 250 bucks. I'm here to say to you, if you didn't have the funds when this shoe came out, you'd have the extra 50 bucks, or you missed it and by the time you wanted to get it, it was sold out. Or if you're wondering if it comes back on the market, should you go for it and grab this shoe? I don't think it's really worth it. I think that the Endorphin Pro 2 is a very fast competitive racer in its own right. And while this might kick it up a notch, I feel like this is just fine and can get you across the finish line in all different kinds of races. Whereas maybe this would be too minimal for some people, who knows? I say save the 50 bucks, get a pair of tracksmith shorts. 
If you're interested in picking up the Endorphin Pro 2, however, I'll put a link in the description of this video so you can pick up your own pair. Keep in mind that will be an affiliate link with Running Warehouse, however, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos. And, you know, I always appreciate that. We all could use a little bit of help now and then. So in conclusion, I hope you didn't think this video was a total waste of time because I just wanted to put you at ease if you were feeling sad that you didn't have the Pro Plus. It's a good shoe, it's a fun shoe, but is it really worth the extra 50? To me, no. I think this is a great shoe for 5Ks, 10Ks, possibly a half marathon, so we'll see what I can do with it. And hopefully this video helps you to decide if it ever does come back out on the market, what you'll do with your 50 bucks. Well, everybody, that concludes my video of Did You Miss Out on the Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit that notifications bell so you can find out every time I upload a new video. Thank you for not putting checkers on the Pro Plus. I have some more videos for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. Come on, we're going outside. Come on, hurry. Come on. Come on, you got it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I have five minutes till I start my job. You better hurry up. <laughs>